it's Rachel here. I'm starting my video again because the doorbell rang. Um, right, so um, today's um, request came from Pat Patricia. I think we're at day 36, yes, of the 100 day project. And it's of the uh, inspired of the uh, by the earth organic hemp vintage cottons lace fibers breaking down um antique book pages make a bag so i thought i'd make a um hemp bag um for a journal it's going to be more like a pouchy sort of bag um i have this journal that i've completed for a custom order and I, i'm really really a bad girl this is how i measure pretty much put it um on my piece of fabric i'm going to do a fold over sort of pouch i like this the edging of the, what this was probably a towel um, and I bought this at the antique market in Florence and then I'll fold it up and I want it to come about up to here so I'm going to give myself a bit of extra because um, just in case I decide to be a good girl and hem it so I need to trim it where my crease is oh and my scissors are in the other room I think my good ones anyway Oh, I've lost where my crease was. I think it was there. Yes, that's it there. So I've creased it and um, I just eyeball it and cut across. I know you can't see me because I'm off the table. This is the thing about sewing is sometimes you're working with the pieces. Right. Um, now, I need to just decide how much do I want. So I've probably got too much there, but that's okay. So because the journals are fat, you need to take into consideration that for them to fit into the pouch. So when I stitch that there and there, it's just gonna fit in there. Okay, so you need to make them, you need to give them a, a, a more length than um, what the pouch actually is. So let me just see if I can find my ruler. Oh, I really am feeling like a ding dong today. So be ready for it. Right, so I've got about two and a half inches on either side, it's probably too much. Probably do, it'll be swimming in there. Probably do two inches extra. I mean, this is my, my measuring, guys. This is the extent of it. Okay, so I'm just, basically I'm gonna cut here where the, the fabric's thinning. It's not gonna be lined. I'm doing a simple pouch because I realize that not everybody sews and this is something that um, what well, you know not everybody's sews complex things and um, and when you're sewing like a lined pouch it can be it's that much more annoying to do so um, I'm gonna do it like this okay so that now you can do um, you know you could have a slow stitched piece just make sure that when you make it it's going to be that's how big it's going to have to be so i'll turn it sideways so you can see that's how big it's going to have to be i'm not giving you measurements because i put my book there and i measure it like this this is it and i leave about two inches which is about five centimeters on either side okay so that's what i feel like i'm going to need and now all i have to do is decorate it so I'm going to take out the journal. I don't need the journal in there. I'll put that over there. Okay, so I, I may get up and down. Um, I must make that a bit straight. I may hop up and down to grab things because I haven't pulled everything out because as per usual, I don't have a clear idea of what direction it's going to take. I'm just going to trim that off so it's a little bit straighter. Okay. So let me see. So first of all, what I am, like you would, deck if you're going to stitch things onto this, like laces and stuff, you, you can't, you can't stitch down your sides here. Okay. You can't do that yet until you've decorated it, if you're going to decorate it. So the other, oh, the other thing I wanted to show, so this is just like, this was like a, one of those um, center runner things. I just had it in a box. If you have these, like sometimes they're wider. Um, like a doily sort of thing um, they're perfect for this sort of thing I mean this one's too long but just say I had a smaller journal 
um, basically just stitch down the sides and there's your flap and you've got an instant bag. So they're also good things to use. I just pulled that out too when I was just thinking about it to let you know. But we're going to make one from this lovely piece of old hemp. Okay, and if you don't have hemp, you'll just find some old burlap or something. And, and sometimes I like to, I'm probably not going to in here, but sometimes I like to, you know, you could put a doily there if you wanted a quick decoration. You could have a piece of doily somewhere, anywhere. Okay, and um, oh, I pulled out some linens and things that I've got. I don't know what I want to do today. I really don't. Um, got some embroideries here, some pretty fabrics. I might just cut a strip of this. This is very pretty fabric. It's just an old, I don't know if it's English or French. It's not Italian. Okay, so sometimes I just like to put a little collage -y effect here across the top. Um, sorry about my arm going across the screen. It's a nice piece of, it's very stiff. I don't think I'll use that, that's very stiff. Um, oh, that's a nice piece of lace. So you could, I mean, you can have that going across the bottom. That would be pretty. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look what else I have. It's not like I'm lacking for things, am I? Here's some of that lovely, um, what do you call it, ticking that I've been sent. Maybe a piece of that. That's what I like to do, something like that. And then... Now, so it can take as long or as little time as you like. Oh, I just wanted to say also, so I have a piece here that my mum, I got from my mum. So, I mean, you can use a hand stitched piece like this. This is not big enough for that book, but well, that's actually the wrong way, just a minute. So you could have a hand stitched piece, just all been hand stitched. And I would do that, but it would take me way too long. And you get a beautiful bag out of that as well. So just that's just another idea, quickly. Right, but we're going to do this one. And you'll see, it'll, it'll come together. I'll get my act together. So those are going to go there. Oh, where are my pins? Oh, I've got my pins here, just a sec. I wish I wasn't feeling so... I don't know what I feel. Ever since we went up on Sunday to um, the country, to my mother-in-law's parents' place, um, we all feel it over really tired. I wonder if it was like all the fresh air that we got. Our bodies have just gone, oh, we're just tired. Could be springtime, you know, there's a lot of... I don't, I don't suffer allergies, but it could be that um, the spring is... Um, I think... I don't want it to go right across. It's too regular for me, but I might just cut a piece of this one and have it go kind of a third way across on the other side. Now, this does have a right way and a wrong way. Now, oh, I'll probably put it on the wrong way. I will. I'll do that. That looks like the back. So that will go there. And you can see I'm always working with it um, folded so I can see where things go. And I'm going, I am going to do it quite simple. I'm not going to go. But I, I do have an idea for my edging. So sometimes, like this is actually has the selvage here. It's sealed off, but this is where I cut it. So, um, and also here. So um, sometimes you can just, I mean, you could just zigzag down there and it'll fray a little bit, but only to where you stitched. Or you can... Um, We'll do something different that I really love that look. Okay. So I'm going to grab my sewing machine and just stitch these because I'm sure about these. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch. 
Now you won't be able to see my stitching because you're above, but it's just straight stitch. Nothing tricky. And now I'm going to stitch here. I'll stitch the one on the top first. And another reason why with this particular fabric, I don't worry too much about, you know, being precise because it it warps a lot and so it's going to be wonky anyway so you just eyeball it it'll work out i pretty much treat my fabric in a similar way to how i treat my paper okay and then i'm just going to jump over here without even taking it out i'm just going to pull my threads so it's longer and I'm just going to come down here and, and stitch this other piece on. And then I'll, I'll trim that off. Now with fabric, the difference between fabric and paper is that the fabric can bunch up. So you just want to always flatten and readjust. Otherwise you'll get bunching or it'll, or it'll, like it'll stitch into the wrong spot the fabric moves. Right, I need to trim this. So I just jumped over and I need to trim it at the back as well. Let's make sure my little tassels are down. Oh, fringe, my little fringe, no, they're not tassels. And I'll just do a little back stitch there. Okay. Now, my thought was, just a minute, let's just fold this up. Now, does it really matter if it's too, um, it doesn't matter if it's too, if it's higher than the, than the book? Okay, so my next job I wanted to do, I'm just going to pin this. I don't think I'm going to decorate any more than that because I actually really like it, but you'll see what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do a very simple... Oh, no, first I've got to do it across the top. Just a second, getting ahead of myself. I'm going to do a simple binding method, which is really easy. So we're going to take bits and pieces of laces and fabrics. Um, I need to coordinate them a little bit with what I've got going on there. So I'm just going to grab some more of this. And I'm going to cut them. Just eyeball it. They'll be more or less about one and a half inches wide. So let's do a few pieces. And look, just to measure that, just put your first one on top. I need better scissors. Where's the other ones? They're for paper. Cut another one because I've got quite a bit to cover and I love this look and we've done this before on the on the um, plastic bags 
What you doing, Lulu? Eating chocolate. Eating chocolate? Mm hmm. Mm. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I want that one. Have listen now, son. Oh, do you need to close your door because I'm talking? Yeah, I'll close it. Just in case. Got this nice piece. That would fold over nicely. Or well, maybe I like it more that way. So I might do it in both with both options. So, um, well, that would be wider, but it doesn't matter. Oh, and I don't have to do them all the same length. I'm just going to prepare all these bits. And then I can have it. What was I saying the other way? So yes, then I need to measure it there. And I'll do another one. Because I want to have a mix. And I don't know what else I've got in here. It's all some very lacy sort of stuff. And then well, we'll have some of this. Um, where's that fabric? The first one I use. We'll need some of this in there. So I'll cut a few pieces, you know, roundabout. I sometimes forget how much I love my fabrics. Okay, and then what else will I put in there? Don't want all those embroidery things. What have I got here? I want things that coordinate in. Well, that would. And I'm not going to use that piece. I've only got a small piece of that. And I'm not going to use that. Just a minute. So I'll hop up. I have all those colours here. Put some blue oh we'll put some of this oh i love that i might even try and tear it oh just i'll keep that bit for something else um we need some blue in here Got some blue ticking. I'll cut that afterwards when I decide how much I need, and I'd like some of this. Have some new. Oh, I love this. So these are all vintage or antique fabrics, and I've just collected them up over time. So um, they come from so many different places. I couldn't even tell you, but not. I don't buy them. You can't get these things here in Italy. I get. I get them on. You know, I've bought them in Australia even. I have some of this tea dyed antique linen or vintage it might be vintage it might not be antique yes it was an embroidery so it's not it's not actually it's probably just vintage I can tear that yep and we might have a piece of this this is probably a piece of um, dishcloth I'll have some of that okay we might have enough now. We'll see. Probably thinking, what is she doing? What is she doing? Okay, I'll keep that basket near. We might need to go back in there. We certainly have enough for across the top. So, this is quite stiff. I'm going to... It's just like a piece of paper. You've just got to crease it. Okay. I mean, you could get your iron out and you could iron them. You know me, I'm not going to get my iron out. Um, and you just, um, and you would just, it makes your life easier if you just crease them a little bit. If I get my iron out, it means I have to get my ironing, little ironing board out. And it really would take up too much room, honestly. I'll have a piece of this. Oops, wrong way. 
Okay, so let's get started. So basically, I'm going to put this here. Look at that. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. It's very simple. Very simple, guys. Even non-sewers can do this. So you just want to overlap it as you go along. You might have a piece of this one. And have them all different lengths. So overlap. I don't use any glue. I'm going to just use my pins and just try to put it up as flush as you can. It's not all going to be even. We're not going for that look. We're not going for the perfect look. We want it to be, I like the rustic messy. Rustic messy is me. That. And then we need something. Where's the laces? some lace in there and just pin it as you go with that one then we might have a piece of ticking red ticking Okay, pin. Oh, I love this. And then um, I'm going to have a piece of this one. Where's my scissors? And that's the thing, as I said before, with the fabric, you just need to always make sure you'll have to adjust as you go because sometimes you'll get lumps. That's that. And then what else did I have prepared? I didn't prepare any of that one. I haven't used any of this one. What about a bit of this one? I might use the linen end. And I'm just going to overlap there. And just go flush to the to the side, the edge of your fabric. So this is a very simple way of binding. Okay, so we are ready to stitch that. We're just doing straight stitch now. When I first start, I'm going to start up here near the fold. Then I'm going to come back and go in the center and then I'm going to go down the edge. Now the reason for that is that way I can make sure, try to make it as flush to the edge as I can. I put my, my pins sideways like this because I find it easier to pull them out. No need to back stitch. None whatsoever. Always keep one hand sort of holding it all flat. I mean, there are so many different ways you could make, like make a bag for a journal. There are so many different ways. We'll have to do that one day. Now I'm just going to go down to the centre. Oh, and the other thing, you want to be careful that it's flat on the other side as well. You don't want, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to have tucked up bits. So that with the fabric, you just sort of roll it over like that so it doesn't annoy you. And with this hand, I'm just going to sort of help it slide along. And this hand, I'm holding everything flat. And my hand is not moving forward, so I'm not going to stick my finger under the needle. It's just staying there, and the fabric's going forward, but not my fingers. Okay, then we'll come around, and I'll just go hook it here, and I want you want to capture it down the end here. If you want to, you could do it four or five times. I like to do things that are uneven. Um, 
but if you felt like you needed to do it more times then you can and you don't have to have it like what did we cut them two inches an inch and a half or something you don't have to do that you could do them bigger i wouldn't do them smaller because it would be fit you'd find it more fiddly I think that is fine and I love that once it's stitched down it's super nice well I think it is anyway that's that's just what I like and trim it off so it's flush and you can see on the other side it's stitched okay so there we go oh, I love that Look at that okay so you could you could um at this point if you want to put a tie on it you would um, like whatever you decide is going to be your tie. It could be a piece of lace. It could be a piece of trim. Um, it could be something that you hand stitch. It could be a piece of this. I would actually on this, um, or you can put something, you have to stitch a piece, a ribbon here and a ribbon there, and then you can tie them. So you'd have to sort of put your marking here and then stitch one on there, and then you can tie them. Or you can put stitch something on here and just wrap it around, which is what I would be more likely to do. In that case, you can do that at, at the end. You don't have to do that now because you can always add it at the end. So my next job is to, and I think this is going to be fine, I'm going to pin it for a second like this. And here, I don't want it to... Um, move while I'm I'm doing the same thing down the sides now here I can see that it's not quite straight but I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just going to trim that off just a little bit I love doing things in an imprecise manner I can't help myself I just love it it makes it fun for me otherwise I find it too laborious I'm not worried about the frayed edge there. It's all going to be stitched. And just go through and do the same process. And this time, the difference is you're going over the two layers. Am I recording? Because I'd be devastated if I wasn't recording. I'd have to do it all again. Okay, so we'll just put our pin pins in going right through. Make sure you catch it and it's flush. I might put more pins in this one. Okay. I have my bits and pieces here. I put some blue. I won't put, when I'm choosing my pieces, I'm not going to put two pieces of ticking together. I might put that up there so you can see it. Oh, we haven't used this. Let's use this. So that's going to go there. Now, the only thing is, it will make it, um, when we get up here, it will be a tiny bit smaller. So you want to make sure you've left enough that your journal will fit in. And I didn't fold this one, so I am getting it evenly on the other side. It is a good idea to fold them in half first. One, because it's easier to place them, and two, because then you're getting a, a fairly even amount at front and back. So let's fold these. Wrong way. This is so old and faded, this fabric, that it... Um, it, it's hard, like it almost looks like the right side is the wrong side, if you know what I mean. I put that, I put it that way. Now, the reason why I flipped that around was because that was blending in there. Isn't that silly? But I just had to flip it around. So these are this is where my um, front and back are actually joined. So I might pin this here. And then I'll worry about up here. So what I would do is I would actually pin this and this side as well. Um, so that way I can um, then decide, um, just make sure the journal fits in because you're losing this little amount here. It's too long. I'm going to actually cut it off where that crease is. 
and I didn't put my lace on, did I? I'll put a little piece of lace on this side. I just like the lace. It just um, changes up the texture a little bit. So I'll put this little piece here and go there. Cover up a bit of the blue, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's that side. And what I can do is I can just flip that over and see, yep, that's going to be good. Okay, and we'll do this side now. And then I'll sew it. Now, I don't actually have a journal in mind for this one, so um, it's not really a huge concern. Okay, put that there. Oh, we didn't use this one. This one's nice. We'll put this one on this side. And we've got to use this one. I think that's going to be too much. I'll just take that off. So you don't really need that much. Put this one here. And you'll notice I'm putting my pins in where the, the, the two um, sort of binding in inverted comma fabrics are meeting. That way I'm, I'm sure that they're staying together. I'm going to use this one up here. And then what will I use this? Maybe I'll put a little piece of this in there. Oh, I didn't use that one, but I've got too much now. I don't need it all. And I didn't use my lace. So I'm not going to use my lace. I might put, oh, I could put a little bit of lace over there. That's what I'll do. You see, you could also come back with lace and layer it over the top. Oops, stuck on my pin. See, too many choices. And I do like this. I might trim off there. I keep all these bits. You can use those bits for other things. It's not the end of the world. So I haven't gone too lacy with this project. But you certainly can. You can put lace everywhere if you want to. And, oh, I had this. Do I want to put this anywhere? I could have it there. I've got it there, so I'm not going to put it up there. Maybe I want a smaller piece. Just have it here. Okay, so now we're ready to stitch and we stitch it in exactly the same way as we stitched the other one. So I'll start here and then go to the middle and then to the bottom and just make sure everything is going to be flat at the back. It's more important that you do that now because you'll be able to see it. flat yep 
I just fold that over so I can easily fit under. And I just saw that my fabric at the back is folded over the wrong way. So what I'll do is I'll just force it back the other way. I don't care. Right. Give it a bit of character. And I'm just going to... Got a little bit of a long piece. I don't want to trim that off. I want to keep it. I'm just going to stitch it down so it doesn't move all the time. There we go. And I'll show you what happened at the back. But it's actually, I don't actually mind it. I actually like it. The fabric's um, folded over, but and then I folded the back, so it looks like it's almost been done on purpose. I like that. Okay, so that's that side. And then we've got this side, and um, this one I'll just start at the top up here. Now I can take these pins out now that we're holding it sort of all together because um, it's pretty well stitched now. Hold that over. also very nice and strong stitched up like this okay so that's the back so that's going to fold over like that we've got this lovely big pouch for a journal now I haven't quite finished because I've had this thought so that would slide in there it is bigger than the pouch I mean bigger than the journal there's quite a bit lot of leeway but I think that is a lovely way to carry around your journal. But what I was thinking was, I might like to grab this ticking. It's quite long. Now I should put, put your journal in. If you're doing it this way, you'll have to decide beforehand. Put your journal in. And I just want to see here. I want to put this here. I'm just going to pin it. Might as well complete the project. And that will wrap around like so. So I want that amount. Okay, perfect. And I'm just thinking, do I want to halve it? Or do I? No, I think let's keep it thick. Why don't we keep it thick? I'm not going to stitch it on there yet because I was just wanted to see here what would happen if I were to... attach some bits to it how would that look you know like pieces that we um kind of like a snippety sort of thing pieces that have been used in the project it might look nice going around just sort of put them on here and there wouldn't normally put ticking on ticking however I did want to gather up. So I'm going to pin it first and then see if I like it. I might not like it. You know what I'm like. 
could change my mind. I might even use a piece of this that's not even in the project, but I might just like it. Let's show that. some of this this is lovely I need a bit of blue in there I'm thinking and you can put them at different angles and it'll look totally different once it's all stitched down I don't want that little bit of embroidery that's left on there that other blue did I have any of that other blue left where's it gone it mustn't have any left of the other blue okay I need to get a piece of that I love this we need some of this put that there now what I'm thinking yeah, put that there. Did I have any of the original fabric? I've only got that piece there. Where's the... Like, I'm asking you like you can tell me where things are. Seriously, Rachel. Okay, so my silly video cut out. I don't know what's going on. So you missed me sewing this. All I did was I sewed... I started down the centre um, and I went... I did five rows, so I went down the center, I did two on that side and then two on the other side of the center to create this scrappy sort of trim. Um, you did see me pinning it. And then um, I've just stitched it. I stitched it here. And then I just cut out a patch. I stitched it three times across with zigzag. And then I cut out a patch to cover where it joins and to make it stronger and then just stitched around that. And that has completed the... Um, the bag i'm so sorry that you didn't see me do that um and then that just tucks in there you just tuck it under there like that and so i would i did say in my video um at the end that really didn't need to decorate the bag too much because we had the decorative um binding system here um to seal off our edges and then you've got your decorative um scrappy trim as well so I'm so sorry that last bit cut off, um, but it was very, really, very simple. Just rows of stitching down here, five rows, and then stitched it across there at the back here and then put a patch over it to cover it. So it was very simple. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it satisfied um, Patricia's request. And I will, oh, got another thread there. I will see you again soon. Bye.